First of all, I wanted to thank you all for coming. And uh, I wanted to give a round of applause to our wine sellers, our wine traders. And of course, most of all, to the Elm Rotary Club. So, um, you see me running around in this very interesting piece of clothing. And what it is, is a storyteller's vest from Rajasthan, India, in Western India. And it theoretic theoretically, every mirror represents a story. So Ron said to me, well, we're going to be here a long time, aren't we? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to try to do this in 14 minutes or 13, 13 to 14 minutes. So we call this event uh, Turning Wine into Water. Um, uh, for obvious reasons, and uh, that's what we are attempting to do at the event today. And uh, so that's why I told all my friends, they said that was a deal. So I always like to start this presentation with a picture of my friend Ty. Uh, he's the, the, the gentleman in this picture. Now, his real, he's from Burundi, rural Burundi. It's a little country, it's called the heart of Africa, in Central Africa. And his name is uh, actually P. It's spelled P I E. But I said to him, you know, Americans, they're not going to get tea out of this. Would you mind changing your name to Pi, Harper? And he, and he said that was fine with him. Pi was a child soldier in Burundi during, during their ongoing war. He was taken away by the guerrillas at the age of 13 or 14. And he spent the next 13 or 14 years killing people. Probably killed 40 or 50 people. He doesn't honestly know. And when the war, at least that phase of the war, because there are troubles in Burundi even today, uh, came to an end, there was Pi, with no family, no home, no friends. The only thing he knew had to do was to shoot a gun. And everyone was afraid of him. Well, we had trained a group of widows, widowed in this war, to build biosand water supply. And this group of widows decided to adopt the gorillas. These were men who may have killed their own husbands. And they formed a cooperative together to build and install biosand water filters and do community sanitation in their communities. And Pi really took to the work. And he took to the work so much that, in fact, we had the opportunity to set up a community health and sanitation team which we did, and the members of it were Pi, one of the widows who, for all we know, her husband was killed by Pi's friends, and a person from an internally displaced refugee camp that Pi's group was, in fact, trying to kill. And we equipped the three of them with bicycles. There are no roads in this area of, of uh, Burundi. And they would go from village to village, community to community, teaching people about clean water, community sanitation and hygiene. And Ty is now one of the happiest men alive. And so I always like to talk about Ty before the end. Okay, so what is this dirty water about? Next slide, please. There you see it, that's the water source. This is this is a place in uh, uh, western Uganda. Next slide, please. And this is a place in Rwanda. These are children gathering, taken out of school to gather water. Next slide, please. This is a place in eastern Uganda. In this particular area, many of the people have HIV. They're not strong enough to, to go out and get the water themselves, so they take their kids out of school. Go get the water. Next slide, please. And here we are in Ethiopia. Next slide, please. There's another one from Ethiopia. That's their only water source in that entire community. Next slide, please. This slide looks a little different than the other one. Why? The, the man you see there, I'm going to talk about him later, is Dr. Kambali Musabeo, friendly water for the world's medical officer in the Congo. And he's standing on top of a big pipe. I wish I had a better picture, but that's what I've got. This is a city of a million people, Goma. 900,000 refugees in six different camps around there, and not a drop of clean water anywhere. Now, you may think by reading statistics that you might read from the World Bank or from the World Health Organization that the water situation in the world is getting better. And 
And I have to tell you, with my 40 years of experience in India and lots of experience in Africa, that's not the case. And the reason you get that impression is because what these organizations measure is something called improved water sources. And improved what is an improved water source? An improved water source is water that comes out of a pipe. Does it matter if the water is clean when it goes into the pipe? Does it matter if the water is clean when it goes out of the pipe? As long as it goes through a pipe, it is called an improved water source. So, a couple of organizations led by Mercy Corps, um, who I like very much, by the way, put in this pipe at this outfall to Lake Kivu to pipe water into the city. And you can see what's going on on the corner of the lake. People are all doing their business, they're washing their clothes, they're washing their motorcycle, all of the cows are there, and they're piping this water into the city, and in the last year, 2,000 people died of cholera from this improved water source. 100,000 people got cholera from this improved water source. So needless to say, we have a lot of work to do. Next slide. So when we started work in the Congo, I talked to my Congo representative. We got a tiny, tiny little grant from the Washington State Environmental Health Association, $3,200. And we decided we wanted to start working in Congo. So I asked my Congo representative, find a place where you're sure it's going to be a success. Don't pick the hardest place in the world. Just pick a place that's going to be successful so we can say the first project in Congo will be successful. Well, he picked a little community called Kaharo. There's a community of Basra Pygmy people. These used people to used to be forest dwellers. 100% unemployment. No roads into the community, surrounded by water and swamp on all sides. They had a canoe, but the canoe sank. 4,000 households had no school. The reason they had no school was because more than five out of every thousand children born. More than 500 of them were dying before the age of 80 percent from that. An Australian group decided it wanted to build a school there. They couldn't come in. Uh, no health clinic. Uh, so this is the community we decided to choose. It's uh, actually near the border with. So we went to the community. He went to the community, and this is the village leader. His name is. Uh, uh, Ananiya Shiguro, and he said, no, there's no way you guys can do this here. Our people can't do any of this to themselves. So he went in and got a group of 16 women and 14 men, and they built 31 biosand filters in 38 days, and as we've seen everywhere, within three weeks, health started to perk up. And Ananiya said, back up one minute, there had been one other foreign intervention into Kaharoro that they remember. In 2004, during the height of the war in the Congo, United Nations troops came through Kaharoro, raped many of the women, and gave them HIV. So, on top of everything, they were dealing with the community with HIV. So, Ananiya said, can't do it. Once he saw what was happening, he said, he thanked us and he said, you are the first intervention into the development of Colorado since the world began. Next slide. This woman, the name is um, Mama Nyanza. If you ask her how many children she has, she will tell you eight. But you only ever see two. The six of them had died of waterborne illnesses. Well, she, the water thing became so important to her. And again, the kid all of a sudden took three weeks. The kid looked at me. He said, but You guys kept talking to us about soap. We don't have any soap. So she found out how to make soap and is now selling soap in her community. She started doing a little soap making business. Next slide. This is Kanka Shindano. So Kanka turned out to be really good with his hands. No one had ever asked him to do anything with his hands before. But he turned out to be really good at it. He built 35 filters pretty quickly, installed 10 of them, and he said, you know, I see that you guys are using these steel molds. I want to learn to deal with those. Now the 
idea of a welder coming out of a heart is technically impossible. Anyway, Tonka is joining our country representative in a new business about 15 miles away in a town called Uvira, where they're going to be producing and selling biotech. Next slide. This is, uh, her name is Wabita. She's the head of the women's community of Kaharoro. She liked the project for a bunch of reasons. First of all, men were finally taking responsibility for water. Water had traditionally been women's responsibility, and, and now the men have become part of it too. And she was apparently the only literate person within this community. She had actually come from the outside. And, uh, and now she has been convening the women's biosan filter group in Kaharo. Now, the miracle of, anyway, the health got much, much better really, really quickly. And the World Bank, who supposedly has a group that aids possible pygmy community, heard about what they called the miracle of Aurora, and they wanted to come see it. And so they sent the whole team to Aurora. They had to walk through the marsh because there's still no road. And they looked around and they said, well, well, would you like us to dig a well for you? And they said, no, no, we have water on four sides. We don't need a well. Um, um, but what we really want you to do is to give us the money to travel to other bottle communities so that we can teach the skills to them. It hasn't happened yet. We hope. It did. We did that uh, Happened last day. This is Lake Kivu. This is the place where that outfall for collecting water comes from. You can't see much, but you can see that it's a mess. And this is where all the water from the city of, of Goma. Million people come from. Next one. So these are four people I want you to meet. We have the most amazing people, country representatives in our country. It is in, in Africa. First man is Elfas Bashal Mango looking the Bonga. I can spell it. He is our official Congo representative. Second man is Richard Kiambadi. When Wayne, I took Wayne and Noah with me to India, I said, but you know, we're always taking the Americans. We have lots of people who know village wives. And Richard comes from Uganda, from a tiny little village in Uganda. He's fantastic. And so I brought him with me to India. And, and, and he was fantastic. And he's going to be heading up our new training center in Ghana, Uganda. If I didn't come up with we, we have to raise $80,000. As of today, I have 78426 Get out your checkbooks, please. The third one. Is this extraordinary woman named Zawadi Makuzi. When Friendly Water for the World was founded, Zawadi, our first project that we wanted to do with, with, with the watch. And it took us four years to get one. When the war came through, at one point, the government decided they didn't want this refugee camp with a half a million people there. And so they forced them a lot by gun. Many of them died of exposure. Many of them died of diseases, some of them died of guerrilla attacks. But there were 200 women and their children who refused to go. You could shoot them, but they wouldn't go. And it turns out these women had been raped in the war. They couldn't go back to their home villages, even if they still had home villages, and they had no place to go. And so she started working with these women in the city of Goma. And Friendly Water's first commitment. We were founded, we were going to do work with Zawadi. Zawadi was over in here in October 2013. We trained her outside of Portland, Oregon. She was eight months pregnant at the time. And now our community is producing biosand filters. Other communities, in fact, Spreadly Water approved a small grant at our last meeting for this group of women to produce 65 filters for families who have HIV. And the fourth one, is Dr. Kambali Musabeo. Dr. Kambali is a surgeon, doctor and a surgeon, but he resigned from his surgery at the hospital in town. He said, you know, when I work in surgery, I save one in particular day. Working with water, I can save thousands. And he's our medical officer here. So here are the women working, learning how to make biosand filters. I think they're making cement. Zawadi, three weeks after giving birth, working with Dr. Kambali, making a bio sand filter. That's the next one. And uh, there's Elephas with 
three other women from, from the, who were able to buy rich food, who now have a very thri a thriving business. Next slide. This is how they move the buildings around. They like those? Yeah. They're wood and rubber, rubber tires with, the, with wood slats, and that's how they move the filters into place. I thought you'd want to see that. Next slide. So the training we did at a refugee camp was extremely successful. And in the Congo, it is the custom that if you want a minister to come and bless your projects, you actually have to pay him to come. I mean, it's, it's kind of official. They don't think of it as corruption or graft. It's well, the way you do business. And our board had a little fit about that. But said, you know, you have to do things the dead thing. So the minister came, and at the end of the program, and seeing the filters going in, and seeing the happy faces, he went up to Dr. Kambali, he took out from his pocket about thousand dollars, US dollars, with one word, Kibumbo. Kibumbo is a community 17 miles from Goma, from that city of a million. It had been a market town, but it was one of those places where over the last 17 years, the militias and the armies have gone back and forth. It had been 50,000 people in this town, reading by four refugee camps. Now there's only 10,000 people. And water is brought in from the lake about 12 miles away. That is the water source for the city of Kaboom. That's it. We're going to be doing it training in Kaboom again. Next slide. So, World Water Day came around, and Dr. Kabali had an idea, which he told us about a little late, I have to tell you, but about a week before it was happening. He decided he was going to invite every doctor from the entire North Kivu province uh, um, to come for World Water Day to a place which he rented at a fancy hotel in Goma to talk about the needs of clean water. And, and the problem was, all the people with waterborne illnesses, remember I told you there were 100,000 people just with cholera. I haven't talked about the other diseases. So they can get medications, but when they take the medications, they are taking them with the very same water that made them sick. And so he had a day of water. The Minister of Health ended up reimbursing him for most of the costs of this event and is committed to put the biosand filter in every health clinic. North Kivu province in December that are going to be built by a group organized by Dr. Kambali, for which we received a very small grant from the International Foundation, and we'll be doing that in December. So this was taken at the World Water Day conference. Next. So uh, Wayne already told part of this story already. This was the, the orphanage in southwest Uganda. This orphanage, this is so far out in the boonies, I have to tell you. There's no save the children, and there's no world vision, and there's no cars. There's not even police to give you a ticket. That's how the police make their money. The police don't come out there because there aren't enough cars. Uh, this guy decided to form an orphanage for the 400 kids. The community is hilly and beset by something called Cryptosporidium, which is the second leading killer of children in Africa. And sometimes you may watch late night TV and you see ads feed the hungry children in Africa, you see the big bellies. Those kids are malnourished, but they're not hungry. They have enough, usually will have enough food. What happens, that that fascia pore is what it's called, it's formed with a cryptosporidium, cryptospore, they say it attaches itself to the small intestine so that the child can't digest any food. So they are in fact malnourished, even starving to death, but it's not from lack of food. So, a couple in Australia heard about the, he was losing about one-fifth of his kids under the age of five every year from one more than one. A, a couple in Australia heard about this and sent $100. And Richard, we said, we said, Richard, we know this isn't enough money, but can you do it? Well, Richard got on a bus with two biosand filters and all the stuff he needed and some uh, education materials and traveled 270 kilometers to this place out, way out in southwest Uganda. He put in two filters. You can actually see Richard, his uh, 
uh, buried right there at the Uganda rep. And that was the case where three weeks later, I got an email from Julius Cadet Katemba that said, it's a miracle. We don't have a single case of dysentery, a single case of diarrhea. We don't even have a stomach. And that's still true nine months later. Next slide. So this is a case just like this on the other side of the country, in eastern Uganda. This is a man, this is a man, um, he just said, his name is Gabula Milton Andrew. And he started an organization to try to stop child sacrifice in eastern Uganda. They are still sacrificing children there, as many as three a week. And some of the children are caught while looking for water. And I've sent him a little bit of money over the years, you know, when he asks it. But he writes me, in, this was in October, he writes me and says, David, I have a problem. I have 50 kids. He has an orphanage for 50 kids who have HIV. He has a school for 375 kids with HIV, a vocational training institute for people with HIV, and he supports grandmothers and grandparents who are taking in the children, their grandchildren, because the parents are he writes me in October and says, David, I got a problem. I have four kids in hospital, and if I pay the hospital bill, I don't have enough money for food. I said to him, well, of course I sent him a check. Food, not enough. I said, but you know, I can stop the hospitalizations. And so Richard went and installed two filters, and again, the same thing happened in 18 days. No more problems. But he said, but you know, I need 26. I need them for the school, I need them for the orphanage, I need them for the grandparents, I need them all over the place. So the board granted $1,290 to build 20, have Richard build 26 filters and bring them to the community. Next slide. Richard was there about a month ago installing them, but here's the kicker. Two days after the board had granted $1,290 to build these 26 filters, I received a check from Astoria, uh, uh, Crossroads Community Church in Astoria, Oregon, for $1,290. <laughs> so we put Crossroads, we put, we put a gift from Crossroads, well, I made a G rather than a C, I have to tell on, on all of the filters that have gone into that community. Both of these communities, the Tigazi community, the first one, this community in Uruk, called Uruk, Uganda, both now want training. They both want to be trained to make the filters themselves and to bring them out into the community. So, if you write me a little check today, we can work on getting both of these communities trained to build biosan communities, uh, filters out into their communities in Uganda. That's it. That's a couple of my stories. I'm sticking to them. <laughs>